Okay, hi. Hello. So, who do we have here? I'm Chef Chris Salati from McCormick and Schmicks, 1285 6th Avenue, here in Manhattan. We've got some fish with you today. Wow, look at that, man. What is it? This is a coho salmon, um, or also called a silver salmon. It's a wild salmon that are running really great right now. Um, coming out of the Pacific Northwest, this fish here is from Oregon. It's a troll caught fish, uh, which, meant is, which means that it's uh, caught on a long line uh, from the back of the boat. It's not a net caught fish, um, so it's a much better quality than you might see on some of the net caught fish. Now, do you, did you choose the fish for the menu tonight? Yeah, we're going to be preparing this uh, tonight grilled with a chilled asparagus red onion salad and some raspberry vinaigrette. Um, it's really a great seller. Um, most salmons go really well with that prep, I've found. Uh, we're also doing king salmon tonight, which we have some here to check out as well, um, that we're doing roasted with a polenta cake and some wilted arugula, uh, which is also a really nice prep this time of year. Wow, that sounds good. So so now uh, now what made you choose the, this particular, just this particular fish, or you choose all the fish, don't you? Yeah, um, we have what we call the fresh list. We have between 20 and 30 different varieties of fresh seafood on the top of our menu. Most of them are included throughout the menu, but some of them uh, are up there and they're not on the menu and they're for our guests to come look and, uh, and see what we have and we can prepare it almost any way they want. Um, usually it's just steamed or grilled is the way they ask for it. Um, but this fish we chose tonight because it's, it's running wild right now and whenever uh, something is fresh and wild uh, and in season, that's what we like to grab. But that's the beauty of our menu is we print it twice every day, once for lunch, once for dinner. So we're not stuck with the same thing day in and day out. So if the quality on a particular item isn't so good one week, we can take it off the menu and choose to use something else, either local or fresh. Do you do, you do your best to choose like wild fish rather than farmed? Yeah, we use both. Um, some some farm fish is great, um, you know. But when wild is available, we opt for the wild. Okay. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now? You're gonna show us how to right. cut gonna... it up. Or what's the term? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're gonna butcher the fish. Okay. Um, so we had this shipped in to us um, already gutted, so we don't need to do anything with that. Uh, the first thing I like to do when cutting the whole fish is remove its head and fins. It makes it a lot easier to handle the rest of the fish um, when you don't have all this extra on it. Um, really important to use a very nice sharp knife. Um, if your knife isn't so sharp, you will uh, actually tear the flesh of the fish instead of cut through it. Um, and that is not something that our guests like to see. Okay. So we're going to start by lifting the fin here and right underneath this collarbone. I'm going to remove just underneath this head here, okay, just to where the backbone is, right above the, the head, and we'll stop there for now until we turn it over. Next, I'm going to remove this side fin right here. Now, you can maybe see with the camera how the fin comes around here. I like to feel with my finger as I cut, um, but it definitely takes some practice because as you're cutting it here, you can't really see what you're doing. Um, so you want to make sure, obviously, that you're not cutting your fingers apart. Okay, we're going to remove this fin here. Again, this is where a good sharp knife comes in handy, because if you don't have one, these fins will be pretty tough to work through. And we have a couple fins on the back of the fish we're going to remove as well. Okay. Yeah, just curious, can you use, I mean, I see it, you're tossing it out, but can people, like, use this as a fish stock? Uh, you can, on a lot of different fish, um, but I wouldn't suggest using salmon. Um, it's better to use white fish uh, when you're making fish stock or broth, um, and when we cut our halibut in a little while, I'll show you what bones are good to save for that. Okay. Uh, the salmon bones tend to be too oily, um, oh. and they just don't make for a good stock. So we're going to come underneath there, just like we did the other side, and remove the head. No problem. And then again, we have this fin here, just like we had on the other side. And we're going to go ahead and pull that out. Okay. Also, real important when you're dealing with whole fish, um, you know, if you do decide to buy a whole fish at home and, and butcher it yourself, um, you know, it takes some practice, but when you decide to do it, you never want to handle a whole fish by its tail. It's, it tends to separate the spine and tear the meat up a little bit, so always try to work from the head. Okay, here we have the backbone right through the center, so we're just going to take our, our nice clean fillet knife, and we are going to run it right through here following the spine as closely as we can. We're actually cutting through some rib bones here. But again, a nice sharp knife should slide through there with no problem. Okay. And we're going to follow that straight through the tail. And this should come off just like you see it in the stars. That's a right. beautiful colored salmon right yeah. there. This is a very, very fresh fish. Okay. Let's move this to the side for now so we can work on cleaning up the rest of this fish here. Okay, from here, all these rib bones here, we're going to have to pull those out. We're going to trim out a little belly. 
And believe it or not, there's tons of little bones all throughout here, which with a pair of needle nose pliers, we're going to have to go in and pluck each one of those out individually. Okay. All right, so we're going to start here by real slowly taking our knife and just following these rib bones. So it's really important to have a knife, nice sharp knife that uh, does this kind of stuff. Sharp fillet knife. For this type of knife here, it's called a scimitar. You can see it. It comes up to a point here. Um, Butchers use a, a thicker one for meat. Uh, we prefer the thinner fillet style scimitars um, for the fish. And we're just going to finish out taking out these rib bones. I feel like we're on a Master Chef or Top Chef or, <laughs> or Gordon's or Hell's Kitchen or one of those, <laughs> right. huh? All right. Okay. That last little piece of belly there. Now I'm going to just turn it around since I'm a lefty. It'll be easier for me to work with it this way. This here is left from uh, the back of the spine. We ran our, our knife so close to the spine that we actually shaved a little bit of it off. So now we're just going to go ahead and trim that out. Okay. Uh, we're going to take the skin off this fish. Now this fish is scaled, as you might have seen on the edge of the knife, there were some scales left over, but this is scaled, so you can actually leave the, the skin on this. You can actually leave the skin on this. We're going to go ahead and remove it. So, we're just going to work our knife right under here. Now certainly what I would suggest when you go to the to your fishmonger to ask him to do this for you. Um, but you can work that skin off there. I'm going to take the rest of this belly right off. Now this is something that you can absolutely save and use for a lot of different things if you're doing a secret stew, if you're doing uh, you know, fish tacos, anything like this. Um, it's great meat. Um, however, this part of the fish is much thicker and so by the time this cooks... Garcia, killing me dude. Film me take that out. Um, this part of the fish here, much, much thicker than this. So by the time this were to cook, this would be all dried up and well done, and you wouldn't want to eat that. So we're going to trim it off at this point here. Okay? Now for the dreaded pin bones that we were talking about before. I like to use pliers that are curled on the end. It helps me get to the bone without piercing the skin. Okay? Um, so right here, all along here are all these pin bones. You can hardly see them, but you can certainly feel them. I'm going to have to pluck these guys one by one. Now, if you're buying this fish, if you're buying the fish already, your fishmonger would have done all this? Yeah. Um, y yeah. You can absolutely ask him to do this. I would, ap I would totally suggest it. To be honest, this isn't something that I would do at home. Um, but for the sake of uh, a little learning and, and exploring the fish market here, I'm going to show you how to do this. But it's definitely a good idea to ask to have this done for you. So you said this is a, a, a what? This is a what salmon? It's this a is coho this salmon. This is coho. Yeah, also referred to as silver salmon. And how does how would you say it differs? It differs in taste than other salmons. This is a slightly less flavorful fish than a king salmon. King salmon would be the the most flavorful or full flavored of the salmons. Um, this is going to be closer to what we're used to on the Atlantic salmons um, that you see most often in the grocery stores. Um, but it has, this, since this is wild, this will definitely be a little bit more flavorful um, than some of the farm-raised Canadian um, and certainly the Scottish Atlantic salmons that you'll see around. Um, but it has a medium flake. Um, you can see it's got a gorgeous color. Um, this fish is perfect for grilling, roasting, steaming. Um, you know, Would you ever use this for sushi? Absolutely, yeah. This is sushi-grade salmon as okay. well. So, we so could, I could say, oh, let me have a slice of it right now, and that's not a problem. Yeah, we could eat it right off this board. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I love sushi, but I was just curious about when you're buying, if you want sushi, do you, you know, if you bought this, that would be okay? Yeah, you would want to check with your fish purveyor, you know, the guy you're buying it from, and make sure that okay. it's like sushi quality. Okay, um, and what does it mean if it's sushi quality? What would you... 
Uh, it's just it's the way it's handled. Um, you know, making sure that first of all it's a really great quality fish to begin with, that it has the right amount of fat, um, and that it was caught properly and not beaten up too much. Sometimes the net caught fish, you know, what happens is they get their heads stuck in the net and they flap around quite a bit, and there can be a lot of bruising, and it's just not pleasant to eat always, um, especially raw when you do it that way. Okay. Um, so yeah. sushi grade is just a you know your your fish will be able to help you out with that. Okay. Okay. Let's move along to halibut. Oh, yeah, let's do that for the halibut. Okay. 